As you know, this week marks 50 years of broadcasting for CKSA. We'd like to take this time to go back and share our story of how the station came to be. Arthur Shortell was born in 1919 right here in Lloydminster. He served several years in the RCAF, then returned to Lloydminster to take over his father's auto body shop. Shortell was an avid ham radio operator, and when a group of investors wanted to start a radio station in Lloydminster, Shortell had a vision that the station should be locally owned, and in 1957, CKSA 1050 AM went on the air. I think it was Mr. Shortell's belief from the beginning that it should be a locally owned uh, uh, operation um, that would then work for the community and service the community and look after the community. Shortly after that, Shortell set his sights bigger and wanted to move into the ever-expanding world of television. As television was crossing the land and, and this area needed also some television, uh, the same thing happened again. A local group, most of the same people and some additional people got together and formed a company uh, to establish television in this community. And it, and it was here for one reason, that's to serve the local community. At the time, the radio station was operating out of a back room in Shortell's auto body shop, but there wouldn't be enough room there for a TV station to operate out of. The CKSA building was constructed in downtown Lloydminster. Our TV studio was equipped with the latest in television technology, a single black and white VidCon live camera. Art Shortell had a vision that a television station could do well and survive and thrive, kind of middle of the prairies and a bit of a hole between Saskatoon and uh, Edmonton, uh, I think to look back five decades and say, you know, that someone had the forethought to, uh, to see that and see it come together is pretty amazing. It was a long ways from Edmonton and a long ways from Saskatoon. So uh, there was a natural place to establish a, a broadcast facility such as this. The front page of the Lloydminster Times the week after we signed on was a story about how families were rushing out to buy TVs wherever they could. Before CKSA went on the air, viewers here could only just pick up stations out of Edmonton or Saskatoon. I was a very young uh, person. We got a TV shortly after that because we could actually pick up a station. And I remember Ernie Ford as Grandpa Sneezeby and uh, the best cartoons that were ever produced and watching those when I got home from school. Shortell always wanted to grow the brand and expand into more communities. It's also been the, the voice for the region. Like the people in the area, Vermilion, Bonneville, um, Battleford, all these people served well by these stations over the years and, and it is continuing today. Uh, I think there has always been a lot of pride in the fact that we had our own TV station. I say we, I mean the region, uh, but I know uh, most of us uh, watch at the uh, Week in Review and, and we, w I think we feel a little closer to it when we see the uh, cameras at our events. Our generation is, is the one of the first of, of everything being on TV. So I think back to the earliest memories I have of uh, the Kennedy assassination, of landing on the moon, um, you know, the 72 hockey series, everything that we saw uh, on television. That happened here too. We saw the same pictures. So I think they brought Lloyd Minster and Region into the world vision of all that happened. Local news has always been a staple of our programming. However, like most stations 50 years ago, we didn't have much in the way of field equipment. All newscasts were done live from the studio, anchors had to memorize their copy, and production could only show a few 35 millimeter still photos of cast. As opposed to today, where teleprompters are used, we receive several back-channel satellite feeds throughout the day to bring you the latest news from across Canada and the globe. And you have to, in this industry, always be up to date with the latest technology and, and do what you can to keep on top of things. News coverage, in, in essence, is the same thing. You're still telling the stories of people, what they're doing, keeping people informed. Uh, the only thing that has really changed is maybe in the way that we do that and the fact that our technology is, for the most times, a little bit more quicker than, you know, back in the 60s and 70s. Over the years, we've grown our camera department to include a number of field cameras, giving us more tools to tell local stories. Our cameras have been there for almost every major event in the Lakeland and Midwest region for 50 years. When I call other centers of similar size or slightly larger and I arrange for a press conference, I just assumed there was a TV station. I just assumed they'd have what we had and then I realized how lucky we are here in Lloydminster. I think it's a very unique situation in that most communities this size do not have television stations. So it's been a great opportunity for people in this area to showcase not only events that they have, but when there is news in this area, people can find out what's going on in their community. It's there, it's, it's every night.
Again, most small communities don't have that luxury, so I think it's been a huge benefit having CKSA and CITL here. In 1965 and 66, rebroadcasting towers were added on to the CKSA service in both Meadow Lake and Bonneville. In 1974, the CRTC heard an application by CFRN to move into Lloydminster and offer a CTV service. Art Shortell opposed the idea and began working on a second television service for Lloydminster. CKSA was granted a license for the second service and a new channel, CITL, would be added. Some of the other CBC affiliates in other markets who uh, allowed the major market stations to come into their market and serve with the second service ended up having to fold or sell out or something else. Then, as it is now, there are very few twin stick operations in Canada. Ground had been broken by two other uh, markets uh, in, in Canada, Thunder Bay and uh, and Yorkton. Many told him the cost of operating two stations could not be supported by the city the size of Lloydminster, especially when you consider that almost all the broadcast equipment had to be replaced to allow for the second service to begin. The medias of radio and television uh, that, uh, that Art had created uh, created Lloydminster to become the hub between the two provinces of Saskatchewan and Alberta. Sadly, within months of the new CITL station coming on the air, the man whose vision it was to bring television to Lloydminster passed away. And thankfully he was with us, with us right through to the day uh, and a while thereafter that he was still with us to see that dream of his come true. That was one of the most fulfilling moments of my life. Yeah, it was quite a change to uh, lose uh, some of your key uh, management and at the same time be taking on a whole new challenge uh, with the television operation. But uh, went well and the next year uh, Ken Ruptash and Jane moved down and Ken got involved in the radio and, and then later became general manager of radio and TV and away we went into the future. Not only did he leave his mark on the stations that he created, but on the city and the province as well. Art was a city alderman and is credited with being the driving force behind the Civic Centre and was the founding president of the Alberta Broadcast Association. There have been many famous faces to grace the airwaves of CKSA over the years. Everyone from Tommy Hunter to Mr. Dress Up. But when we return, we're going to look at some of the local faces to beam themselves into your home every night. That's next on Around the Region. Mm -hmm.